All right, I found um, a new tool to record my screen. It's called Screencast Omatic. It looks very promising. Um, I'm going to use it to record a video on one possible answer to uh, the London being the move C5 on the second move. So I'm going to show an example game I found uh, in the chess base. Um, and it starts off with d4, d5, bishop f4. That's what we'll probably always play. And black replies with c5. This is a reversed uh, queen's gambit. <coughs> now black, now white plays e3, not c3, uh, because that would allow black to exchange pawns in the center. And yeah, the position gets very symmetric, and it will be hard to get anything then. So e3 is a little better. Um, black plays knight c6, just like in the queen's gambit, putting more pressure on d4, and uh, white counters that by playing c3 to stabilize its center. Um, he has one weakness. Uh, there's one weakness in white camp and in the white camp and that's the pawn on b2 because there's no more bishop to protect it um, that's caused by the fact that we're not developing our knight before our bishop as we are told uh, in the opening principles um, but okay um, queen b6 tries to take advantage of that and um, there's um, the main the the main satisfactory move to play here uh, for white is queen b3 because if black would take the queen now uh, if he would take on b3 then we would take back with the pawn and then we have an first of all we have an open file for the rook and we uh, control the c4 square which is a uh, yeah, which that's why we have even more control in the center than we already had. We were controlling the black squares, but now also you have a pawn uh, controlling a white square. Um, so it's quite obvious that white uh, has a good position here. I don't say it's winning, but it's a good position. So where were we? I will very quickly repeat. We were d4, d5, bishop f4, c5, e3 knight c6 c3 and now queen b6 and queen b3 um, and of course yeah black is also happy if white would take his queen so he tries to force white into doing so uh, by playing c4 the white queen has to retreat but still protect the b2 pawn so white plays queen c2 uh, and now black finds a very active move uh, which is bishop f5 so the bishop is hanging but if the queen decides to take it uh, yeah black will take on b2 and the rook will be his but okay there, there are s solutions for this I think the only reasonable alternative here is queen c1 Note that queen d2 is probably not very good because uh, it will be attacked soon if black um, yeah, develops the knight to f6 and f6 and maybe e4. Then the queen has to move again and I think uh, it will be a disaster then. So queen c1 is a possibility. Um, but uh, white plays a very active move here. He plays, he takes the bishop. So he actually sacking an exchange here. Uh, black has to take, so he takes on b2. Uh, and white takes on d5. So now black takes on a1. And if we look at the material, then uh, black is up a rook against a bishop. Now, it's not over here. Um, White plays key queen b5, and he protects by playing queen b5. He protects the knight, 
So queen takes b1 check is no longer possible, but he also attacks the b7 point, uh, where he would fork rook and bishop if he would be allowed to take there. Um, and uh, Grude decides to cast along here, which is a very risky move, but on the other hand, it's a very complicated position. What to do? Um, now white plays a very logical move, uh, probably the yeah, it must be the best move. This bishop takes c4. This not only takes a pawn back, but it also protects the a2 pawn, which was the only available exit point for the queen. Um, so actually now the queen is trapped, we cannot take it uh, yet. Um, but she's out of the game for some time and yeah, this is... Uh, where black, uh, white is going to try and take advantage of. So um, black realizes that he will have to develop as soon as possible, so he plays e5. But uh, white is not interested in this pawn, he uh, plays knight e2, he wants to castle really fast. Knight e2 also protects the c3 point, and if he can castle and play knight d2, he will, yeah, he will have black's queen. So that uh, that would be nice indeed um, black plays bishop d6 developing um, and white castle so now it's uh, yeah, pressure on white uh, black is really big because knight d2 wins the queen so he plays a6 forcing the queen to retreat and there's actually only one square for the queen and that's the b3 square um, and unfortunately, black can fork queen and bishop on this square. I say unfortunately, okay, it, it would be great if we would have won the queen. Uh, but we're still only down a pawn here with white. Um, and the computer says, evaluate this position as slightly better for white. And Houdini suggests to play queen a4 here. Um, okay, the game is complicated. Uh, Black will take the bishop, white will take the knight, um, and in the end, um, white will be a pawn up because the queen will be on the king's side, and there are just uh, too many weak pawns there. You have a c7 and the b7 pawn, which are both no, the f7 and the g7 pawn, which are uh, both very weak at this moment. So uh, one of them will definitely fall. Um, but white found an almost equally good move, and that's to sack another piece while being down upon. It's really uh, an incredible game. Uh, it shows how good players of the level Fide Master already are. It's quite remarkable. He plays bishop e6 check. Um, this doesn't take anything. This is just uh, he just sacks complete bishop, and uh, yeah, blacks. What can black do? He just takes the bishop. He says, "Okay, what's your plan?" White takes back with the queen. Queen takes e6 check, and black follows up with rook d7. Seems like a logical move, protecting the weak g7 pawn. And now white takes d takes e5. So again, uh, at this moment, white is down a rook for three pawns. Seems a bit risky, but uh, okay, things have not cleared out yet. Black still has to uh, get out his queen. It could take a couple of moves. And um, white is really aware of this, that uh, he has a dynamic compensation for the exchange. Um, and actually, black realizes he's in trouble here, because I think if the bishop moves, rook d1 follows. And yeah, what to do, how to, um, how to defend the rook? I don't think there are many possibilities. Um, so yeah, d takes e5 was a very remarkable move. Um, so he develops the knight sacking the bishop um, and from here on the position is clearly better for white um, I won't say a lot anymore he's up a pawn and um, this pawn is 
protected by a bishop it's very hard to take this pawn and this pawn will win the game that's all you have to know actually I could show the rest of the game but we're learning a repertoire it's clear that white has uh, found a solution in a very critical uh, variation uh, of the London I think so um, yeah he's just going to protect this pawn overprotect it and try and promote it in the end there will be a lot of tactics uh, involved with this pawn so I hope you enjoyed this um, I really thought this was uh, quite a remarkable game from van der Werf in the London system which some people consider to be boring okay Bye-bye.